It is amazing that music can be written down. Listen to this. The invention of musical symbols and notation goes way back to ancient times. Without it, this or any other music cannot be preserved. This particular piece was created by a deaf composer. If one does not need ears to compose music, then what good is it for painters? Perhaps that's why 50 years later the painter Van Gogh would let his ear go for a self-portrait. At about the same time Beethoven's Ninth Symphony premiered, a book came out. It was a strange book written by a teenager. It was called Method of Writing Words, Music and Plain Songs by Means of Dots for Use by the Blind and Arranged for Them. The system was invented. Blind people could read. The representation of geometry using algebraic symbols came in 1637. The new revolutionary method known as analytical geometry would pave the way for modern math. Pierre de Fermat and René Descartes independently came up with the idea and published their work in the same year. The idea is to combine two of the greatest work in math, Euclid's Elements and Quarismi's Algebra. Today, we attribute analytical geometry to René Descartes, who is also known as Cartesius. René Descartes' main advantage was the use of new symbols which he invented himself. Symbols like X and Y that was never seen before. Here's an example. This is the solution to a cubic equation. More accurately, the cubic diminished equation. Previously, this is how it would be shown complete description. It is very difficult for us to understand what this is. This is the Cartesian version. This is the equation and this is the solution to that equation. Today we write it like this. The difference between these two is not much. One, this fish shape is the equation that we use today. This symbol is the cube root of today. This QQ is today written as Q squared. René Descartes had another advantage. While Pharma used one number line, René Descartes came up with a brilliant idea of using two number lines, one horizontal and another vertical. So the horizontal number line is called the x-axis. The vertical number line is called the y-axis. Together, they meet at a point known as the origin. This plane that is formed would be called the Cartesian plane or the Cartesian coordinate system. In order to put a point, this is what it is done. It is written as an ordered pair. An ordered pair would start off with a bracket. Then the first value would be written known as the abscissa and the second value would be known as the ordinate. The abscissa now commonly known as the x-coordinate would start from the origin and it would go towards the right if it's a positive value. Now if there is a point 1 1 that means starting from the origin you go one unit towards the right and one unit upwards. If there's another point, minus three, minus three, then you go three units towards the left this time. 
and 3 units downwards this time. So this would be minus 3 minus 3. The joining of these two points would be a line. The line can be extended on both sides. Now, in order to define the line and eventually represent this using algebra, one essential property has to be declared. The fundamental property of a line is expressed by a ratio. Ratio is the comparison between two numbers. This ratio is written as A divided by B or it can also be written as a single number. When a ratio is expressed as a single number, then it is compared with 1. For example, the ratio 5 divided by 2 can also be written as 2.5. This means it is compared with 1 unit. If 2 divided by 5 is the ratio, then it can be expressed as 0.4. That means 1 unit of this is 0.4 unit of the other. When the upper number is larger than the lower number, then it's a number larger than 1. But if the upper number is smaller than the lower number, then the final value is smaller than 1. The concept of ratio can further be explained using the concept of economics. In economics, elasticity of supply talks about the behavior of the market when the price changes. Elasticity compares the percentage change of price, percentage change in quantity supplied. If the change of price increases, then in economics, the supply should also increase because the businessman would benefit from that. But the market behaves differently for different products. If we talk about the market of computer hard drives, then an increase in the price would increase in the quantity supplied in the market by a large extent. So the supply would be more and there would be elasticity greater than one. On the other hand, there are certain markets where the supply would not be increased that much in spite of the increase in price. For example, if the price of the paintings by Leonardo da Vinci increases, the supply of the paintings would not be able to increase that much because after all the painter Leonardo da Vinci is dead. In that case it would be less than one or inelastic. The special property of a line is called the gradient. The gradient of a line is the ratio of change in the y-axis to change in the x-axis. When it is represented by a single number, it means a change in one unit of the x-axis would result to a change of n unit of the y-axis. This can be compared to the concept of stairs. When we take a look at the stairs, it would give us a better concept of what is going on by looking at from every perspective. For example, this particular stair and this stair, they don't have the same gradient because this one, this one is steeper. It would be more difficult to climb this stair than this. So the comparison becomes, when we talk about stairs, one unit of the x unit would give rise to another unit of the y. Another one unit of the x would give rise to another unit of the y. And thus it rises. So the gradient, also known as slope by the letter m, can be thought of as rise over run. But there are stairs that fall. In these types of stairs that fall rather than rise, we can call them fall over run. And usually they are denoted by a negative number. At first, the stairs might not look like lines. But if you take a look closer, every step is like a point. And when we join these points and they rise up step by step, one unit of x and a particular unit of y. 
and by joining these points we eventually get a line. If we take a look at this line, it is clear the slant of this line or the gradient of this line is higher because it is rising higher with every one unit. Here we can see that the gradient is lower. And here this is falling rather than rising when we are comparing to the x axis. So it is clear that the gradient of a line is a step by step change, but for a particular line, the gradient is fixed. If the gradient of this line is m1, if the gradient of this is m2, if the gradient of this is m3, and if the gradient of this is obviously it will be a negative gradient, m4. For this particular line, the gradient would be m1 throughout. It would be fixed. For this line and for this line, each of them would have their individual gradients. A gradient of a line is a constant and it's a ratio that cannot change for that particular line. So the point over here is x coordinate 3 and y coordinate 1. And the point over here is x coordinate 5 and y coordinate also 5. We can think of this as a triangle. So the difference in y coordinate is from 1 to 5. So we can write the change of the y as 5 minus 1. And the difference of x is from this 3 to 5. So we can write the difference is 5 minus 3. So that makes it 5 minus 1 is 4 unit of rise. 5 minus 3 is 2 unit of run. So that makes the gradient 2. Remember, the ratio is a comparison with 1. So 1 unit run means 2 unit rise. Now, here, if we take at this line over here, the x coordinate is minus 5 and the y coordinate is 1. And if we take this point, the x coordinate is minus 1 and the y coordinate is 3. So the gradient of this line is going to be, difference of y coordinate is 3 minus 1 and difference of x coordinate is minus 1 minus minus 5. That makes it 3 minus 1 is 2 and minus 1 minus minus 5 is minus 1 plus 5 which means 2 divided by 4 or half. So that means if you write it as 0.5 as a single number, it means 1 unit of x is 0.5 unit of y. Now here we see a line that is falling, so the gradient should be negative. So this point over here is 1, 1 and this point over here 1 minus 1 and this point over here is 4 minus 4. So the difference of the y coordinate would be minus 1 minus minus 4 and the difference of the x coordinate would be 1 minus 4 that makes it minus 1 plus 4 divided by minus 3 4 minus 1 is 3 divided by minus 3 which is minus 1 that means it is falling by one unit on the y axis as it runs for one unit on the x-axis. Now there are two more lines. This particular line is a horizontal line that is not rising at all. No matter which point you take, the x-coordinate would be changing but the y-coordinate would not be changing. So the difference of the y-coordinate would be 4 minus 4 which is 0 divided by minus 6 minus minus 2. So it doesn't matter because 0 divided by anything is going to be 0 also. So any horizontal line has a gradient of 0. On the other hand, this line is completely vertical. Here, the x coordinate is not changing. So x coordinate 1, y coordinate 1, and the x coordinate is 1, y coordinate is 4. For a line where the x coordinate is not changing, so the difference of the x is going to be 0. That means, the change in the y is going to be 4 minus 1, but the change in the x is going to be 1 minus 1, which is a 0.
When a number is divided by 0, it becomes a very large number. That means the gradient would be undefined. So this can be expressed using algebra. For a line that passes through two points, one point x1, y1, the other one x2, y2, then the gradient or slope m of the line is the difference of the y with the difference of the x. Now, the next question is how do we find the equation of a line? In order to understand the equation of a line, the concept of proportions must be clear. Proportion is a statement that says two different ratios are equal. This can be clarified using the concept of physics. If we say that the pressure of a particular fixed volume of gas is proportional to the temperature of that gas, it means the ratio of P1 pressure and T1 temperature is equal to the pressure at a different temperature. That means if one unit increases, the other would also e increase, but by not equal amount. So now we need to know the different proportion of a straight line. You see, if a line passes through any point and if the gradient is always the same, then we can find out an arbitrary point where the gradient would be equal to that ratio. So if we know the gradient of a line passing through two points have this value, difference of y and difference of x, then if we take any other arbitrary point x, y, we can also calculate the gradient using this known value and the arbitrary value. That would make the new gradient difference of y as y minus y1 and difference of x as x minus x1. Now this can also be calculated using the other point. Since this different ratios are equal, we can simply write y minus y1 divided by x minus x1 equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. This is proportion because this ratio and this ratio, they are equal. If we can simply remove this and using algebra write the symbol m, we can simplify and write y minus y1 equals to m for this multiplied by x minus x1. And thus we get the equation of a line. This particular equation is known as the point slope form. If I say that a line passes through two points, one point is 1, 3 and the other point is 5, 6. Think of another point x, y. That means if we find the gradient using the first point and the last point, the gradient would be difference of y, which means 6 minus 3, and difference of x, which means 5 minus 1. That means 6 minus 3 is 3, and 5 minus 1 is 4. So 3 by 4 is the gradient. Now, if we take this point, 1, 3, and the arbitrary point, by logic, the gradient should be same, because for a line, the gradient is fixed. That means the difference is y minus 3 divided by x minus 1. Now, since the proportions, these are equal, we can simply write y minus 3 divided by x minus 1 equals to 3 by 4. Thus, we have represented a geometric line using algebra.